I'm Mark Thompson, Executive Vice President and Provost of Quinnipiac University, and it's a great honor and pleasure for me to welcome you as the newest members of our university community. Welcome to all of you. Now, you're about to hear from a few important people to welcome you, but before introducing them, I'd like to take a minute to thank two very important groups of people. First of all, those enthusiastic readers, there's about four to 500 faculty and staff who came here this morning to make sure that you were appropriately greeted as the newest members of our community. Would you thank them for being here this morning? The second important group that I want to acknowledge, these individuals have worked tirelessly to make your transition to Quinnipiac a great experience. I'm very proud of them and I'm very thankful for all that they do on your behalf. Will the orientation leaders please stand and would you thank them for the greeting that they provided you? I'm really excited for all of you and where you are in your lives. I'm not sure that you're aware that Quinnipiac is derived from a Native American term that translated means turning point, and that's where you are. You're at a turning point in your life, and we're here to help you make the most of it. You're entering, entering into what I would argue is the most important transformational period of your lives. You're at a point where the decisions and choices you make will have a lasting impact on your future success. And keep in mind your college experience is the foundation upon which the remainder of your life is going to be built. So let's do everything we can together to make sure that that foundation is strong. This is the place and time in your life to recognize you have a lot to learn and know, but you're so smart, you're so capable, and there is so much potential in each one of you. Make the most of it. Don't leave things to chance, but be an active participant in your future. You are the architects of your own future, and you play an important role in your success now and into the future. Our common goal and commitment is to provide you with an educational experience that will be extraordinary in, in its results, such that you'll be well prepared for personal and professional success, success. We want to be sure you have everything you need for success in this 21st century world in which we live. Student learning is the primary goal of our community. You are at the center, and your well-being and development is at the forefront of everything that we do. I encourage you to join us as active partners and help us to make sure you get the full benefit of your educational journey with us. And at this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the president of Quinnipiac University, Dr. Judy Olian. Good morning, everyone. I hope you can tell from that very, very long round of applause that we are absolutely thrilled that you're here on behalf of the faculty, staff, and administration of Quinnipiac University. I welcome you as new Bobcats. Yeah. As it does for you, this fall 2018 term opens a new chapter in my life too since I'm the new president of this wonderful institution. You are a very big reason that makes Quinnipiac so special. It's fun to observe all of your faces. Some I see illuminated by your phones. I encourage you though to look up and look around to see who else makes Quinnipiac special. In addition to your terrific peers of the class of 2022, it's the faculty and staff whose diverse skills, disciplines, and backgrounds share one single focus on developing the next generation of scientists, teachers, journalists, advertisers, analysts, entrepreneurs, sociologists, engineers, technologists, health specialists, performers, musicologists, managers, and leaders. That, by the way, is you. Like those wireless wonders to which we're all addicted, a university education is a portal to a world beyond ourselves. 
But if your phone is a window that lets you look and hear, but never really experience, a Quinnipiac education is a door that can open to an entirely new life path. And that door keeps on opening and opening again and again and again. If what flickers across your screen is fleeting, the knowledge, outlook, and perspective you gain here is probably the most permanent and formative experience of your life. Some of you have already had, I, I guess, the very sad experience of having your heart broken by a boyfriend or a girlfriend, or you have broken someone else's heart. You surely know by now that your high school sweetheart may not turn out to be your life partner, maybe, and maybe not. You will have, on average, 10 different jobs before you turn 40, and 12 to 15 over the course of your career. So very few things in life are permanent, except maybe that tattoo on your arm or on your back or wherever it happens to be, and please don't show us. <laughs> but the one thing I can promise you is that you will always be a bobcat, and you will be a different person. I can't tell you exactly how the next few years will change you, and although you've all demonstrated how smart and insightful you are by the very fact that you're sitting here today with us, neither can you know how you'll change. But I can assure you, you will be changed. That's the wonder of a university education. It'll transform you, will reveal whole new subject areas, countries, cultures you will never know existed. You'll become curious and thirsty for more, you want to explore and discover further, and you will be exposed to scholars and fellow students whose diversity of experiences complement yours and open new horizons. You are now part of a community rich in knowledge, ideas, and points of view. This is a learning environment that celebrates the ideals of reason, ethics, and integrity. We want you to develop strong analytic skills and the capacity to appreciate the multiple angles that define most issues. If those are skills you don't yet have, you will. Right about now, you're probably saying to yourself, well, wait a minute. I came to Quinnipiac because I want to get a job in fill in the blank. How does this help me become a civil engineer or a business analyst or teacher or occupational therapist or whatever? Well, it does. Let me assure you, going to QU is a very smart financial decision. According to a Georgetown University study, the lifetime earnings difference between those with a college degree and those who graduate just from high school is between $1 million to $4.4 million, depending on what major you choose. And during bad times, like the Great Recession of 2008, according to a study out of Brookings, those with just a high school degree were four times more likely to lose their jobs than those who had completed college. So yes, there are many, many reasons to graduate from college, including the fact that it is a financially savvy decision. If you ask employers what they're looking for, they want new hires who can think on their feet collaborate across disciplines, work well in teams, and are flexible in the face of change. In short, they want people who can connect, collaborate, and change. One of the hallmarks of Quinnipiac is its connection to the marketplace and to what employers want and need. We've got a very good track record there. And, an institution, and as an institution committed to scholarship, our faculty bring their research right into the classroom so you'll benefit from learning up-to-date concepts that are very relevant to what you'll find in the marketplace. Whether internships, immersion, study abroad, working closely with faculty in labs or case competitions, you'll be able to take a deep dive into your chosen field and interests. And since our faculty partner across disciplines, your learning won't be narrow or siloed. You'll be connected to, in courses to students from other fields 
fields that you'll later encounter in your jobs. And for all of these reasons, employers are very attracted to Quinnipiac graduates. At the same time, you will discover here on these beautiful campuses a diverse community that is warm and welcoming. You will meet people who did not grow up in your town, who may not look like you or talk like you, and they probably don't think like you. That's what makes this a wonderful university. Not the buildings, or the food, or the residence hall, or the athletic fields, though, yes, they're all very important. The essence of our university is our people, our students, our faculty, staff, and alumni, and we are all different. Differences make us stronger. We receive the input of better ideas when people come from different walks of life. And we're more likely to actually hear those ideas if we're not closed-minded. And let's face it, we do not come into this world or to cue you knowing everything we need to know. If you do, heck, why are you bothering with Quinnipiac? You're here because you want to learn, and learning means broadening our thinking, seeing what we didn't see before or know before. And that comes from opening ourselves up to the full richness of our community, even if it makes us uncomfortable because we've never encountered certain backgrounds or economic differences or disabilities or points of view that we're now encountering. And we need to provoke ourselves into hearing and seeing new things, considering new ideas, and who knows, it may well change us for the better. Celebrating differences as a source of strength is a value that we should all hold near and dear, and one that I'm especially proud of here at Quinnipiac. Engage in conversations that bridge cultural and political divides. Don't be afraid to encounter challenge or conflict, but do so with civility and respect. Open yourself to differences and you will become a better person a more interesting, more curious, more, more caring, and more engaged person. Your journey at Quinnipiac starts today. None of us can say exactly where it will take you. It should be forever a journey that doesn't end in four years or five or six. Learning is a forever activity. You've no doubt heard the expression the only constant is change, and change requires you to keep learning. Just think about the phone in your hands right now, how it's evolved from your first, hand, from your first home. How many of you submitted your application to QU through a mo mobile device? Show your hands. Show your hands how many submitted through a mobile device. Well, nationally, over 70% of freshmen did submit their applications through a mobile device. But dig a little deeper. A rapidly changing society and technologies are driven by even more rapid changes within ourselves, how we imagine and create what's next. Now here's a promise. You will change over the next four years at QU. You will discover new things within you You'll find new purpose, and you will see the world around you with different lens. The next few years will be transformative as you learn about the power of diverse ideas and about yourself, who you are, who you want to be, and how you want to have impact. And remember, you're in a very big sandbox at QU. Play in it. Take courses across the campus. Learn about something you know nothing about. Go to a theater performance, the Irish Hunger Museum, a soccer or lacrosse game, or eat sushi. Test your leadership skills in a club you join or in a sorority or fraternity. Enjoy the full experience that is QU and grow from it. So we're starting together. You wisely chose Quinnipiac for many of the same reasons that I did. It'll be exciting, sometimes scary, often unpredictable, a lot of work, but much fun too. 
every one of us here today is here to help you grow and thrive. Welcome to the Bobcat family. Thank you. Thank you, President Olian. It's now my pleasure to introduce Greg Eichhorn, Vice President for Admissions and Financial Aid, to present the class of 2022. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Olian and Dr. Thompson. So, it's typically the job of the Chief Enrollment Officer to introduce the new class at the school at welcome and convocation exercises across the country. Well, I'm going to certainly do that today, but I also want to add what this class, the class of 2022, and the transfer students will bring here to Quinnipiac. How this class will lead and shape this university. How each and every one of you has an ability not just to transform yourself, but also how you have an ability to help lead your classmates, classmates and contribute to the community and society as a, at large. How you can leave your mark at Quinnipiac and how you, with your unique and varied attributes. First, before I do that, I'd like to thank many of my colleagues in admissions and financial aid for all their hard work and efforts to help get you here today. I would also like to thank the faculty for their time and outreach efforts, which certainly contributed to your being here today in the uh, People's First Union Center. Deep gratitude um, goes also to our facility staff for their uh, are crucial in our recruitment efforts and, in my opinion, make this one of the most beautiful campuses there is. Thank you to the rest of the members of the Quinnipiac family. Thank you to the rest of the Quinnipiac family because each of you have played a role in attracting this class to the campus. And a special thanks to the current students, especially our student tour guides and those orientation leaders, which again deserve another round of applause. Before I begin telling you about the class and what collectively you bring to Quinnipiac, I want to take a moment to acknowledge a few of you where August 25th, today, already is a special day for you. So as I call your name, I'd ask that you stand. Smirta Bastola, Lauren Clemens, come on, Nicole Clemens, Nixaris Kurhita, William De Bliss. Alicia Testola, Leonardo Francini, Elizabeth Fontaine, Dylan Kloiber, Ryan O'Connor, Gabriella Sashchidi, and Philip Weingart. Today, the 12 of you not only begin your experience here as a Bobcat, but you're also celebrating your birthdays. So happy birthday. <laughs> I also learned that uh, one of our deans is celebrating a birthday this morning, but I promise not to acknowledge him. <laughs> so you guys can figure that out. Today, there are 1,964 freshmen and 204 transfers in attendance. This will be the second largest class in the university's history and one of our most competitive as well. You were chosen for more than 23,600 applications. That's a lot of reading that the admission staff did. As a group, you have an average SAT of 1180, up more than 15 points from a year ago. You rank in the top quarter of your high school graduating class, and you have an average GPA of a 3.41. 19% of you identify as students of color. Approximately one in five is a first generation student, and nearly 3% of you are international. And guys, 60% are female. This class is represented by 33 different states, and students traveled from more than 31 different countries to be a Bobcat today. Nearly 6% of you will study as engineer, to be engineers, 10% will be in the School of Nursing, 11% in Communications, 22% in Business, one, one in five in the Health Sciences, 
and nearly 28% of you should say happy birthday to the new dean in the arts and sciences. <laughs> and 4% of you will go on to get your masters in teaching as well. In addition, over 200 of you will join us in our unique, demanding, accelerated programs in business, communications, biology, and law, where you will all graduate a year early from Quinnipiac with receiving both your undergraduate and graduate degrees. Now, I'm going to ask, as I call your state or country that you consider your home, please rise. I'm going to start internationally. Get ready. Australia. Bermuda, Canada, you're supposed to rise. China, Czech Republic, stay, stay standing please. Dominican Republic, Ethiopia, Germany, Greece, Hong Kong, India, Mexico, Netherlands, New Zealand, Niger, Nigeria, Pakistan, Philippines, Russia, Rwanda, Serbia, Slovakia, South Africa, South Korea, Spain, Swaziland, Switzerland, Sweden, Tanzania, the United Kingdom, and Vietnam. <laughs> Stay seated. Stay standing, please. Now in the United States with the following states, please rise as I call what you would consider your home. Alaska, California, Colorado, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Iowa, Maine, Maryland, Michigan, Montana, Nebraska, New Hampshire, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Vermont, Virginia, Washington, and Wisconsin. Please stay, we have a couple more. We'll now add the rest of you. New Jersey. Massachusetts. New York. And Connecticut. Couple more seconds, stay standing. I look forward to seeing all of you over the next four years, and in just 45 months, or maybe even sooner, in May of 2022, at your commencement right here on this stage. So, President Olian, Provost Thompson, faculty, current students, staff, and the entire community, I present to you the class of 2022 and transfers. Welcome. Now you can see. It's my pleasure to introduce our Associate Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer, Dr. Don Sawyer. If you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you like to win but think you can't, it's almost certain you won't. If you think you'll lose, you've lost. For out of this world we find, success begins with a person's will, is all in a state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster woman or man, but soon or late, the person who wins is the one who thinks that they can. Is that right? All right, I know. And so a famous philosopher by the name of Drake asked an important question. <laughs> Kiki, do, okay, I was, just, <laughs> I was just trying to make sure all of you were still awake. All right, so good. So I love poems, I love icebreakers, and I love seeing the faces of, of new students. Um, and so I've, I've seen a number of you throughout the past few months at open house programs, admitted student weekends, new student orientation, and now as Quinnipiac University students. And so some of the things that I'm gonna say, you've heard before, um, and that's fine. I'm sure you've listened to a Beyonce or Taylor Swift or a Cardi B song more than once, and so you should be good hearing this again, am I right? Good. 
And so one of the first things that I remember from about 24 years ago when I sat for my opening college weekend was asking myself, why are these orientation leaders so darn happy and bubbly, right? <laughs> it's not that much happiness in the world. I'm from New York City, and we were not known for our friendliness and, and, and happiness. And so I also was thinking about whether or not I made the right choice. If I would fit in, if people would like me, did I choose the right major? Am I going to get homesick? Where people noticed the fresh pair of Jordan 9s that I had on my feet at the time? Because I was fresh. <laughs> and so fast forward, I was 18 years old, and it was in my first semester of my freshman year, and my GPA was a 1.8. And so side note, and a point of information, during your college career here, you should never be the same age as your GPA. <laughs> unless you're 40, okay? And so I was in a new place. I experienced culture shock. I went from Harlem, New York City, to Oneonta, New York, to move in with Andrew Lawrence, who was from Manchester, Connecticut. We were from two different worlds. He hadn't grown up around many black people, and I hadn't grown up around any white people. However, we decided to make our room a brave space where we would ask questions that people were afraid to ask in public. So we laughed, we argued, and we pushed each other to be better people, and we grew as a result. We didn't agree on everything, but we learned to disagree in an agreeable manner. We still don't see eye to eye politically every now and again. We get into Facebook beefs and stuff like that. But I know if I ever needed him, he would be by my side in a split second. And so a lot of the work that I've done throughout my career the seeds were planted in that room. We were afraid, but we still took chances and we grew again as a result. And so for you, this is your time to grow. This is your time to take chances while being supported by faculty and staff and other people and resources that you have here on campus. And so I ask that you use every resource that's available to you to ensure your success. Because success happens when opportunity meets preparation and we have what you need to be prepared for when opportunity knocks. And so some of you may have been asked, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? And I don't think that's a fair question, because I'm only a couple of years older than you, and I still don't know, um, just a few, <laughs> what I want to do with the rest of my life or what I want to be um, when, when I grow up. And so I think one of the most important questions that we should ask you is what problems do you want to solve and allow that to guard, guide your choices? I think you have to start thinking about the world's problems because they won't be solved by any one person. Our nation's problems won't be solved by any one person, but we have to see ourselves as part of this connection to the larger fabric of humanity. And I believe that connection for you can begin right here at QU. The world that we live in has changed. It's big and small at the same time. And as you go throughout your journey, throughout your life, and throughout your time here, you're going to have the opportunity to connect with people who have different religions, different political affiliations, different sexual orientations, and gender identity expressions, people who come from different cultures and ethnic backgrounds, people who speak a different language. And so how do you prepare for this ever-changing landscape? Here at QU, we aim to prepare you to be successful upon graduation and equipped with the tools necessary to make a difference through practices guided by what we call inclusive excellence. Through inclusive excellence and our focus on the world-sized classroom, our curriculum will prepare you to be engaged, culturally aware citizens while learning the kind of adaptable skills that will serve you for a lifetime. We bring the local and the global together and understand that all of our stories are connected. But we need you to do this work in order to make this happen. And so as I move to close, I want to share with you a poem that was given to me by my high school teacher a couple of years ago when I graduated. It's called The Creed to Live By by Nancy Sims, and it goes like this. Don't undermine your worth by comparing yourself with others. It is because we are different that each of us is special. Don't set your goals by what other people deem important. Only you know what is best for you. Don't take for granted the things closest to your heart. Cling to them as you would your life, for without them, life is meaningless. Don't let life slip through your fingers by living in the past or for the future, but by living your life one day at a time, you live all the days of your life. Don't give up when you still have something to give, because nothing is over until the moment that you stop trying. Don't be afraid to admit that you are less than perfect, because it is this fragile thread that binds us to one another. Don't be afraid to encounter risks. It is by taking chances that we learn to be brave. And don't shut love out of your life by saying it is impossible to find. The quickest way to receive love is to give love. The fastest way to lose love is to hold it too tightly. And the best way to keep love is to give it wings. Don't dismiss your dreams. To be without dreams is to be without hope, and to be without hope is to be without purpose. Don't run through life so fast that you forgot not only where you've been, but also where you are going. 
Life is not a race, but it is a journey to be savored every step of the way. And so as I close, again, this is going to be the time for you to push yourself. This is your chance to take risks. This is your chance to move beyond your boundaries and see what the world has to offer you. In four years or so, when you're here again walking across the stage to get your diploma, I want you to be able to look back and say that QU is a better place because of all that you have contributed to this campus. I also want you to be able to look back and say that you are a better person because of your experiences here as a member of the Bobcat Nation. We're grateful and excited that you have decided to continue your journey with us. And again, welcome to the 2018-19 academic year. Thank you. And now it's my great honor to introduce the president of your Student Government Association, Ryan Hicks. Can everyone hear me? Yes? Excellent. All right. Thank you, Dr. Thompson, for that welcome and for all the speakers before me. If it's all right with you all, I'd like to start with a story. A few weeks ago, a couple of my friends and I decided to go to New Hampshire for a weekend trip. On the last night we were there, we decided to take the family boat out on the lake in the middle of the night. While floating in the middle of the lake, we weren't really talking much. Instead, we were looking up at the stars. There was one point, however, where my friend Mark broke the silence and started talking about just how crazy it is when you think about how big space actually is. In that moment, it kind of dawned on me just how crazy it was that the three of us were able to cross paths and become friends. In that moment, there was a girl from Fort Worth, Texas, and two guys from Long Island in Massachusetts sitting on a boat in a lake in the middle of New Hampshire, looking up at the stars. Look up. That is my message for you all today. As Dr. Thompson said, my name is Ryan Hicks. I'm a senior physical therapy major from Dedham, Massachusetts, and I'm your student government president for this year. It is a great honor to be here today, and I thought I would pay tribute to that by telling you all a story that means pretty much nothing to you. right? You have no attachment to the people in the story. You have no attachment to the memory that it is for me. So by default, that story and this speech up until this point also has no meaning. I am confident, however, that over the next few minutes, that will change. Every year, the student body president has an opportunity to come up to you on stage and provide some words of wisdom, some keys to success, if you will. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to say, so I decided to ask some of my friends what they wish they would have heard when they came to college. Quickly, I realized that all of my friends were your orientation leaders. So any advice that they were giving me, they had already provided to all of you. I didn't want to be repetitive. I also didn't want to hit you with sayings like, try new things or be open-minded. Those are very important, and you absolutely should listen to them. However, you've heard them a million times before. I understand that the story that I told to you today was not the most exciting thing you've ever heard. It's probably not the most exciting thing you've heard today. However, if you look closely, there is a deeper meaning. I once had a high school teacher tell me, look up, because that is where life happens. Look up from the cell phones, the video games, and the computers. Professors, you may not want me to say this, but every once in a while, look up from the textbooks and the study guides too. The best moments in college are not the crazy parties like you see in the movie. The best moments are those random conversations you have in the middle of the night with your roommates even though you all have class at 8 a.m. the next day. The best moments are having that one song that you and your roommates scream at the top of your lungs every time it comes on, no matter how inappropriate the song or the setting may be. It's about finding people from all walks of life, from different backgrounds, cultures, and ethnicities, and learning their story. It's about finding a couple friends you can sit in the middle of a lake with and look up at the stars. The best part about life is having friends, but not just having friends, it's about being one too. So let's take a moment and put this concept, look up, into action. In a moment, I'm going to stop talking, and I want you all to look to the person to the left and right of you and introduce yourself. I'm 100% serious. Say your name, where you're from, and a fun fact about yourself. I'm going to wait, so start talking.
All right. All right, all right, all right. All right. All right. All right. A lot of close friends here, I guess. Stop talking. Well, I guess I didn't have to do that since clearly you guys are already best friends, so that was a waste of 30 seconds, but that's all right. I cannot promise you that the person that you just looked to the left and right is going to be your best friend. It is absolutely possible that the person you just talked to will be that person. They could be your future roommate. Hey, you could even get married. If that's the case, one, you're welcome. <laughs> and two, I'll give you my address later because I expect an invite to your wedding because clearly I'm responsible for your newfound love. <laughs> In all seriousness, I cannot promise you those things. What I can promise you, however, is if you look around this entire stadium, those that fill the floor and are up in the stands, your best friend and the person you're going to write your story with at Quinnipiac is somewhere right here. They're a little excited, they're a little nervous, but they're sitting here right now. I know I was incredibly nervous when I came to Quinnipiac, and the biggest mistake I made my first semester of my freshman year was I started to change the person who I was to become the person that I thought people wanted me to be. There's one moment in particular I'll never forget. It was sometime in late October, early November, and me and the kids on my floor were getting ready to go to a hockey game. This involved some planning, since we had to take the shuttles to be up here on time for when the puck dropped. What I didn't know was there was a second plan going on, to go out the back door of our residence hall and leave a group of people that they didn't want to go with. My mistake, I blindly followed. I went out the back door and left that group behind. By no means, under any circumstances, am I a saint. However, I think in a situation where I was maybe a little more comfortable and a little familiar with the people, I would have stood up and said something. Instead, I was so fearful of what they were going to think of me that I stayed quiet, because I thought that those who you live with and you live around is your only opportunity to make friends, and this is not the case. Friendships at Quinnipiac are going to come at unexpected times and in unexpected places. When that's the case, cherish those moments. Be there to pick those people up when they fall and allow them to pick you up when you fall. The moments where I fell, those were moments that I just described to all of you. Those moments where I was changing who I was in order to try to fit in. I also have moments where people picked me up. During my second semester, when I was starting to turn things around, I started to hang out with a new group of people. I noticed that the more I talked about myself and the things that I was doing, they were excited for me. They were engaged. They were asking questions. They enjoyed my success, but continued to push me to work harder. This group of people, they would end up being my roommates for the next three years. Quinnipiac is filled with amazing people. Take time to learn their stories. Take time to become friends with them. Because remember, the best part about life is having friends. But not just having friends, it's about being one too. Look up. It is where life happens. Not in the big moments that are perfect for Instagram. It's in the small, common, ordinary moments that end up making the best memories. Love one another. Be kind to one another. Life is not about having as many friends as possible. It's about being the best friend to those few that you hold close to your heart. I'd like to take a moment now to reflect on the last 12 months that many of you have had. This time last year, you were preparing to walk through the halls as a senior in high school. Look up. Who were the people you were excited to see? Who were the people you ran through the hallways on the first day to go spend your last year of high school with? A couple months later, you were applying to colleges. And eventually, you got that thick envelope in the mail from Quinnipiac University saying you had been accepted. Look up. Who was the first person you told you were coming to Quinnipiac? Who was the first person who said that they were proud of you? And then, just a couple months or a couple days ago, you went through your orientation experience. Look up. 
Who are the people who you connected with? Who are the people who shared their stories? Who are the people who made you feel comfortable here at Quinnipiac? Lastly today, I'd like to leave you all with a challenge. During my welcome weekend, we were prompted to identify three goals that we had to complete by the time we graduated. My first goal was to get a degree, which seems pretty obvious because that's why you come to college. My second goal was to get involved. I think at this point I was just reciting anyone anything had ever said to me because I wanted to finish the activity. My third goal was to make an impact on this campus to make it better. Clearly my first two goals were a complete cop-out. I just wanted to finish the activity and go somewhere else. My third goal, however, was genuine. And it has guided me through my time here at Quinnipiac. And as a result, I'm going to leave you with the same challenge. I love Quinnipiac University. Every single day, I am in awe by the people, the sights, the sounds that make up this great community. That does not mean that there is no room for improvement. Every journey you embark on and every challenge you take on, keep the members of this community in mind. Keep the people who make up this stadium in mind. I'm hopeful that later today, you can take a few moments to identify three goals that you want to complete by the time you graduate. And hopefully, when these goals come together, they will allow you to make Quinnipiac a better place. You all have 1,357 days to write your story at Quinnipiac University. You have 1,357 days to make those friendships that are going to last you a lifetime while cherishing every little moment. You have 1,357 days to make Quinnipiac University a better place than it is right now. And as you embark on this journey and you begin to write your story, please always, always remember to look up. Class of 2022, welcome home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Now, I would like to take a moment to introduce your three orientation interns and my good friends to present you with the creed and the legend. So would Katie Stokarski, Shannon Cardoza, and Joe Yasso please come up to the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Throughout the summer, you have all signed the Book of the Legend and have learned what it means to be a part of our Quinnipiac community. Our student body creed has been recited at all six new student orientation sessions, but now it is time to say it together as the class of 2022. Please repeat after us and look around at your fellow Bobcats. I choose to be a member of the Quinnipiac University community. I strive for integrity, responsibility, and academic excellence. I respect and value all members of this diverse community. I respect and value all members of this diverse community. I embrace the inclusion of all people. I embrace the inclusion of all people. I preserve Quinnipiac's traditions of pride and spirit. I preserve Quinnipiac's traditions of pride and spirit. Together, we are the architects of our future. Together, we are the architects of our future. We are the legend. We are the legend. You have also learned about the legend of the Bobcat. This story gives our school a background and sense of tradition in, be in being a Bobcat. The indigenous spirit Habamak was doomed to eternal sleep when a spell was cast over him. But his ferocious companion, a stealthy giant bobcat with vibrant blue and fiery gold eyes, was spared such a fate. 
Habamak now sleeps soundly, belly up, forming the peaks of Sleeping Giant Mountain. Today, the confident and devoted Bobcat loyally defends its now sleeping giant and all that falls in its shadow. From time to time, the Bobcat can be spotted around campus watching over our school. Legend says that the Bobcat will allow no harm to come to those swift and brave enough to rub its paw. <laughs>